Welcome to the Mountain Voice, the gospel which is proclaimed from the mountains of Nagalit. Today's message is titled, Exercise Your Faith. The scripture says that each one of us has been given a measure of faith and that we cannot buy it and that it is a gift. You must also exercise your faith in order to have the life it brings. If you want to know how to exercise your faith, this message is timely and I encourage you to watch it till the end. Today I'm going to talk about faith and how we can exercise our faith daily. This message, even though you may have heard it in the past, I tell you is the most important message that you need to keep reminding yourself and to keep practicing in your day-to-day life. Because faith is the only way that we can please God. Faith is the only way that we can obtain the promises of God. Faith is the only way that we can experience the benefits of salvation. So even as we are growing in biblical knowledge, it's so important that we are not neglecting the most important things, exercising our faith daily. Romans 10, 17. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes from hearing the gospel. You cannot call on the name of the Lord until you hear about the Lord. And the message about the Lord is encapsulated in the gospel. So we need to understand this. Faith is not something that we have inherently in us. I'm talking about Bible faith. Faith is not something that you just possess by yourself. It's a faith that comes from the grace of God. So how can I practically exercise faith every day? You must understand that there is more to listening than just listening. Even listening is a spiritual, supernatural exercise. Faith comes by hearing, not by having heard once in the past. So it's important to be lending the attention of our ears always to the gospel. Because in the preaching of the word, in the hearing of the word, there is this dynamic that is happening in the spirit. You cannot see it, but it's the mystery of the kingdom of God that as the preacher preaches and as the listener listens, there is faith being built up in our hearts. And not only faith, but people receive miracles in their lives through the hearing of the word. Don't underestimate simple listening to the word of God. Can you say amen? There is a saving that is happening. So there are certain things that are very important and more important in priority than even your faith and even what you are experiencing in your life, in your heart, or in your feelings right now. And that number one priority is the Word of God. Because faith cannot exist by itself. Faith cannot exist in a vacuum. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The Word. So you cannot have faith if you have not heard something, which is the message about Christ. The engine is the Word. So we must always put the Word first. The Word is always first. The Word is in front of us. When you have heard the Word and you are believing in the Word, that's what you call faith. Feelings is not the way for your faith to be exercised. Faith by itself is not how you exercise your spiritual life with the Lord. It's always the word first. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So, faith comes by hearing. Hearing. That means I must be hearing the word. That means I must be looking at the word. I must be meditating on the word. My mind and my heart must be fixed on some promises, on some truths. Because faith is like a hook that we have in the heart. But that hook must be connected to something so that it pulls us in the direction of the promises and the miracles. And when we say we walk by faith, you know what that means? Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. So how do I exercise my faith? I don't walk by my feelings. I walk by the Word of God. We walk by faith means we walk by our conviction. We walk by our belief on the Word of God. And this is something you must learn to do every day. You wake up in the morning and you begin to exercise your faith. How do I do that? 
Father, I thank you that today you are with me. Because the word says, you will never leave me, you will never forsake me. Father, I thank you that today my youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, I thank you that your word says, your word says, your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Father, I thank you that your word says that you have grace for me every day. I get up in the morning, and the first thing I do is I set my mind on the word, and I say, Father, I thank you that today I am forgiven. I thank you that today your favor is on my life. Father, I thank you that today you are with me. Your Holy Spirit is with me. Father, I thank you today that your protection is upon me. Father, I thank you that the blood of Jesus covers me. So what am I doing? I am setting my heart because my heart is the place where you exercise my faith and i'm placing it on the word of god i'm making my mind conscious of the word of god many times i stand in the front of the mirror and i say i thank you lord that my youth is renewed like the eagles look at psalms 103 let's read from verse 1 bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities. So that's one verse to exercise your faith every day. Father, I thank you that you have forgiven me of all my sins. Who heals all your diseases. Father, I thank you that you heal me of all my diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Father, I thank you that you have crowned me with your favor and your glory today. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's one of the benefits of the Lord. Father, I thank you my youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, I thank you that my youth is renewed like the eagles. I just speak, and I speak it, and I speak it. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, but I speak it. And every time I speak it, I sense the strength of the Spirit in my heart. Because it is shifting my consciousness and my mind away from the discouragement that people begin to feel in the heart and mind when they're entering more and more into all age. Oh, I'm not young anymore. Oh, I can't do the things that I used to do when I was 25. All those thoughts, it begins to affect the moods. And when your mood has been affected, guess what has happened? Your feelings have taken over and it's not your faith. Because in the spirit, there are no moods. Do you know that? The spirit realm is the realm of the eternal. The spirit realm is the realm where everything is always peaceful. It's always constant. The spirit realm is not up and down, up and down, up and down. Happy, sad, moody, angry, rejoicing in the Lord, discouraged. That means when you hear bad news, you're still at peace. Why? Because your mind is focused on the word. Your heart is hooked to the word. Your faith is always God is with me. God loves me. His love will never be taken away. So even if earthquake should come, God still loves me. That faith and believing that word will give him the strength to engage with the changing circumstances of life. Every day wake up in the morning and say, I am blessed today. Whether you feel blessed, whether you see any blessing, whether you experience any blessing or not, that is not important. The Word. The Word is first. The Word is the engine. The truth of God is what must be first. That means I must get up and my focus should not be my feelings. My focus is not, do I have faith for the day? Do I feel I am strong in faith? There's no such thing as a faith feeling. You remember that woman with the issue of blood when she heard about Jesus? She heard about Jesus. She said, if only I will touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. And so she looked to where Jesus was. She was not looking to herself. She did not say, do I have faith to be healed today? Do I have faith to walk on the streets today? Do I have faith to touch the hem of Jesus' garment? Do I have faith? Do I have faith? Do I have faith? She was not trying to analyze. She was not trying to rationalize. She was not trying to look within herself to see whether she had faith. She just looked at Jesus and from Jesus came faith. Focus first on the Word. 
Father, I thank you that your word says, today I am blessed, and therefore I am blessed. Father, I thank you, your word says, I am the righteousness of God, so I am righteous. Father, I thank you that your word says, your mercies are new every morning, so Father, I receive new mercy this morning. You are focused on the word. Your target is the word. Your eyes are looking at the word, the eyes of your heart. And when you look at the word, when you look at the word, when you look at the word, because when you speak the word, you are hearing the word, isn't it? So in other words, you are hearing. So when you are seeing the word, you are hearing the word because you are speaking it, faith comes and you feel strong. But you should not look to your faith when you feel strong in faith because it was not your faith that made you strong in faith. It was the word. Message of the cross says that by the cross, God destroyed the power of darkness over our lives. Because of the cross, God has made a way for us to have eternal life, for us to be washed in His blood so that we can be righteous in the righteousness of Christ. So the message of the cross is different from the message of your life. So what is the experience of your life right now? Think about your own life. Now, the experience of our life is where we need the miracle of God. That's where we need the intervention of God. That's where we need the promises of God to be fulfilled in our lives. So there are two trees. One's the tree of your life and one's the tree of Christ. Atonement, redemption. So now, where are you looking at to determine where you are in faith? Now, your life experiences are facts. Everyone say facts. The fact of your life says you are sick in your body. But the truth of God's word because of the redemption of Christ says, you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Can you say amen? Which one will you believe? Which one will you allow to reign in your heart and your mind and your mouth? See, the way God intended is this, that the power of these truths will manifest in your life so that your life will change. It will be transformed because of the message of the cross. Remember Romans 1, 16? Well, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is... The power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation. Change your life. The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation for those who are sick, for those who are broke, for those who are depressed, for those who are in depression. The message of the cross is the power of God unto salvation for these people if you will believe. So now, you will have to look to this place. This is here. You'll find this here. It is revealed. It is spiritual truths that are hidden in the Word of God. So the way we change is through your mouth. The way you bring the shift is through the power of your words. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, Faith is not just agreeing to some doctrine. Faith is a spirit. It's an attitude. It's something that can be seen. I have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. So Paul is saying here, we also believe and therefore we also speak. How do you exercise your faith? Through your speaking. Through your Words. Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. That is an exercise, an operation of faith. You hear the gospel. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You raise your hands and say, I believe in you. I accept you as my Lord. The moment you confess, you are saved. That's how the operation of faith has been completed in your heart. Faith is exercised by speaking. I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. There are many sides to faith. First is the receiving part. Faith comes by hearing. When you hear, faith has come. But when faith has come here, it must be released. It must be released. And the failure for most Christians is not the receiving part. The failure is the releasing part. They're afraid to speak what they believe because they are too 
conscious of what people will say. Some sense of false humility, trying not to sound boastful. Or their mind is telling them, how can you say you are blessed when you are not blessed? So that means they're more conscious of this. They're conscious that they're broke, disgusted, sick. Everyone in the family has no job. How can I say I'm blessed when our family is like this? So the mouth is silenced. And if your mouth is silent, the enemy has defeated you. Faith is corresponding action based on your beliefs. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, then declare, confess that He is Lord, and bam, you receive salvation. So in the same way, the word that you see that pertains to who you are, when you believe it, you must speak it. You must be bold about it. We believe and therefore we must speak. Speak what? Speak what the Word says. Not what your feelings say. Not what is the circumstances of your life. Speak what the Word of God says. I am blessed. I am healed. I am righteous. Let me show you something powerful that happens in your mind, in your consciousness, in your subconsciousness, in your heart when you speak. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? How does worry come? By saying. Have you ever talked about the rising prices with your friends, and the rising problems, and the rising corruption, and at the end of that one hour of conversation, you checked your heart, and there was no peace, no joy, no courage? How did that worry come? By saying, what is worry? Worry is a fiery dot. Have you seen those arrows where there's a fire and they shoot it into the barn and the whole house begins to burn? Right? So in Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says, faith is like a shield that quenches the fiery darts of the wicked one. So the wicked one is smart. He knows how to burn your spiritual house down. So how he would do it, it's not a literal arrow. It's a thought. It's a suggestion that is designed to burn your faith to burn your spiritual house. So what does he do? He puts thoughts in your mind. He puts suggestions in your mind. How do you take the thought? You take it by whatever comes to your mind, you say it. Have you ever experienced this? Have you ever been to the hospital and you have been there taking care of your sick grandfather, grandmother for many days? All the conversations you heard and suddenly one thought came, you will die when you are very young. And Without you checking the thought where it came from, you call up your friend and say, Aya, I think I'm going to die young. Have you ever said that? What have you done? You have taken the thought by saying. Take no thought saying. How you make a thought yours is by giving voice to that thought which came to your mind. How do you take a thought? How do you make it yours? How do you possess that thought? By saying. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So your heart is the place where your faith is exercised. The heart must be guarded. See, we don't always think in words. Did you know that? Many times we think in pictures. When you want to imagine yourself rich, you don't think of words. You think of cars. You think of houses. You think of lands, right? Pictures. So those pictures are important. Why? Because those pictures can be shaped by your words. What you speak. Abraham had to see himself a father of many nations before Isaac could come. He had to see here. I'm always sick. Oh, I'm always sick. Every year in October, I get sick. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So guess what happens? By August, September, his faith is already ready to be sick. So you have to be careful of the imaginations of your heart. Because the imaginations of your heart reveal what you are most conscious of. So, when you speak the word daily, what's happening? You are taking control of the ear gate. And you're speaking the word to yourself. What's happening? Your heart is being renewed. Your mind is being renewed. And the internal picture begins to change. So now you look at the word, the gospel, the truth about Christ, and you put it in your heart and let it come out of your mouth and you daily proclaim it. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. I'm healed by the straps. Because when you speak, what's happening is that it is changing the pictures in your heart. 
so that now you begin to see yourself healed. The sickness may still be in your body, but the Word says you are healed. The Word says you are healed. The Word says you are healed. The sickness is in your body. Don't deny that the sickness is in your body, but acknowledge that the truth has power over the fact. The spirit realm has power over the natural realm. So if you will believe the spiritual truth, it will change the circumstances of your life. So you are focused on the truth and you are speaking the truth, you're believing the truth, is creating the image in your heart, the right picture, the imaginations of your heart. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so it will manifest. Don't see yourself broke. See yourself blessed in Christ. See, you have to see yourself in the Word. See yourself in the Word. See yourself in Christ. In Christ, I am righteous. In Christ, I am blessed. In Christ, I am healed. In Christ, I'm delivered. In Christ, I'm accepted. In Christ. So you got to see yourself in Christ. In Christ, I am accepted. What's going to change? Here. The imaginations of your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he see. So what you do is this. Every day, you practice this. And sometimes when you're starting out, when it's hard work because you have to shift the logic of your brain that says, I can't say this. How can I say this? But now you have to understand the logic of the Spirit, the logic of the kingdom of God. The logic of the kingdom of God is this. It always begins first from truth and the Spirit. It doesn't begin from the facts of life. The Bible says, that's my logic. Science is not my logic. Physics is not my logic. My logic is what the Bible says. So I'm looking to the Word and I'm speaking the Word daily. I'm speaking the Word. In speaking the Word, and at times your flesh will fight you, your mind will fight you. It will make you think that you are doing something that's wrong, but it's not wrong. It's the truth. Your mind will renew. To the point you will come to a place when... The spirit realm is more real to you than the natural realm. That's the time when you're always constantly walking in the spirit. Problems come today, testimonies come tomorrow. So how do I live? I live focused on the truth of God. And I practice it daily by speaking it, by speaking it. I speak it, I speak it, I speak it to the point where it has renewed my mind, it has become my default mode, means everywhere I walk, when I'm comfortable, when I'm relaxed, automatically from my heart, the word comes, I am righteous. Thank you, Father, I am healed. Thank you, Lord God, that I am the righteousness of God. Thank you, Lord, I am forgiven. It's just natural. It must be developed to that level where you are now always speaking the word, confessing the word, trusting the word, and that brings that stability to your soul your heart, so that now you're not living by your fears, your emotions, or your feelings, or even your excitement. Understand this. When you're believing for healing, you're believing for provision, you're believing for a stronghold to be broken in your life, and you're confessing the word, I'm delivered by the power of darkness. I'm the righteousness of God. Christ, through his poverty, has made me rich. I'm redeemed from every curse of the law. My family is redeemed from every curse of the law. And the blessing of Abraham is upon the life. When you are believing, you must speak the word. And at times you must speak loudly and boldly and continually till the image in your heart changes. Never allow any picture in your heart that is opposite to the word of God. Never allow any picture in your heart, any movie to play in your imaginations opposite to the word of God. Don't pray for healing. And then start meditating on a movie about being sick all the time. Don't be meditating on this movie about how your children are going to be caught up in drug addictions and alcohol. It's like movies on the inside. And some people have yielded to those movies so long that it's become their normal. That they can never see themselves healed. They can never see themselves victorious. They can never see themselves rich in Christ. The word must change the internal picture in your heart. If the Word of God cannot change your words, it can never move your mountains. If the Word of God cannot change the words of your mouth, your mountains will never move. The first mountain that must be moved is your tongue. 
Don't beg and scream and cry for God to move your mountains. God told you, speak to your mountains. But we are begging God, God, remove the mountains. God saying, speak to your mountains. God, remove my mountains. God is saying, speak to your mountains. You got to exercise your faith. You got to speak to your mountains. The word of God must move the mountain of your tongue first. And when it has become normal here, then you will see the mountains in your life being removed continually. I believe this message has blessed you and given you a deeper understanding of what faith is and how to exercise your faith. If you have prayer needs in any areas of your life, feel free to email us or contact us on the numbers given on the screen. We are ever ready to pray for you. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is the right time for you to accept Him. Kindly pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I invite you to come into my life. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer with faith and conviction in your heart and now you want to know how to start a new life with Christ, kindly contact us. God bless you and we will see you next week.